there, third grade students and families. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to week 11, lesson one for the week of May 25th through the 29th. This video is to support schools using the Bridges Math Program. My name is Ms. Greenwood, and today is all about understanding quadrilaterals. Materials to support today's learning include pencils, scrap paper, and a ruler. All right, third grade friends, let's do this. Objective. What is the focus of our learning today? Students will name quadrilaterals in multiple ways. This means that we can take a look at a quadrilateral and determine whether it has additional names that we can name it by. How will we know? what names to use for quadrilaterals. We will need to pay close attention to the different attributes that we are observing as we examine different shapes. Why is this learning important? We want to be able to understand both the similarities and the differences of the shapes we are examining. Think about it, which one doesn't belong? Look at this set of four polygons. A polygon is a two-dimensional figure that is closed and has straight sides. Decide which one doesn't belong with the other three. What is different about the one polygon when compared to the others? Jot down your thoughts on paper. You can also discuss with someone if they are nearby. We will come back and discuss shortly. Noticing and describing a difference in an attribute can justify your choice of which one doesn't belong. An attribute is a specific characteristic or quality that a person place or thing has. For example, I can say polygon labeled B doesn't belong because it is shaded in gray while the other three polygons are shaded in white. What did you notice about the number of sides? What did you notice about the kinds of sides? What did you notice about the number of angles? What did you notice about the kinds of angles? There are lots of attributes to consider and to think about when comparing and contrasting polygons. Be sure to share your thoughts on the Schoology discussion board for the think about it of this lesson. Our learning target is naming quadrilaterals in multiple ways. To do this, we must notice and note attributes that are similar and that are different. A quadrilateral is a two-dimensional closed figure that has four straight sides and four angles. Within this group of quadrilaterals, there are special quadrilaterals with unique attributes. One is named parallelogram. Parallelograms are quadrilaterals that have an additional unique attribute. They have two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel and congruent or equal in length. Let's look at this group of quadrilaterals on the word recess card at the top of the screen. Let's see if we can spot any examples of parallelograms. Remember, you're looking for quadrilaterals with two pairs of parallel and congruent sides. There are four examples of parallelograms. The quadrilaterals I shaded in pink can also be named parallelograms. Noting different attributes is important to help us better understand similarities and differences of shapes. It's important to note that all parallelograms can be named quadrilaterals. Not all quadrilaterals can be named parallelograms. Let's take a closer look at special quadrilaterals that we can also name parallelograms. 
Any quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides opposite each other can be named parallelograms. Rectangles can be named parallelograms. They too have two pairs of parallel sides opposite each other, but they also have an additional unique attribute of four right angles. We call a corner a right angle if we can visualize a little square fitting perfectly inside. A rhombus can also be named a parallelogram. However, its difference from a parallelogram is having four congruent sides, so it is named a rhombus. This group of parallelograms also includes squares. Like the rectangle, it too has two pairs of parallel sides opposite each other and four right angles. Like the rhombus, the square has four congruent sides, meaning that all four sides in both rhombuses and in squares are equal in length. Because it is the only parallelogram to have all of these unique attributes, we call this quadrilateral a square. There is another group of special quadrilaterals. Let's take a look at some examples from this group. Think about whether these examples can be named parallelograms. Although we can name these shapes quadrilaterals, we cannot name them parallelograms because none of them have two pairs of parallel sides opposite each other. However, they do share a unique attribute that other quadrilaterals and parallelograms do not. We name this type of quadrilateral a trapezoid because it has at least one pair of parallel sides. Notice that trapezoids can vary in their appearance. The one set of parallel sides may be observed either on the left and right sides or on the top and bottom sides of the trapezoid. When comparing trapezoids to parallelograms, you will notice that parallelograms have two pairs of opposite sides that are congruent in length, while the trapezoids do not. Although trapezoids have four angles, the types of angles can vary. For example, the trapezoid in the middle has two right angles. The trapezoids on the left and right do not have any right angles. To review, we can name all of these shapes shown here as quadrilaterals because they all are two-dimensional figures with four straight sides and four angles. We can also name them trapezoids because they all have at least one set of parallel sides. To better understand quadrilaterals, it's a good idea to construct or draw them. You can use the Math Learning Center GeoBoard app, or you can use paper along with a pencil and a ruler to construct quadrilaterals. The first step is to decide which quadrilateral you are going to make. Let's say we're going to make a trapezoid. We need to think about the unique attributes that a trapezoid has. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. When I make my trapezoid, I am going to make the right and the left side of my trapezoid the parallel sides. You can also choose to make the top or bottom the set of parallel sides because we know trapezoids can vary in their appearance. As you are making various quadrilaterals, think about the similarities and the differences that you are noticing with the attributes. As you construct and draw different types of quadrilaterals, you should try sorting them based on common attributes that you are noticing. Pictured here is a group of 16 different quadrilaterals. Notice that we have examples of squares, rhombuses, parallelograms, rectangles, trapezoids, and quadrilaterals. How might you sort all of these quadrilaterals? Think about attributes 
that you are noticing that are the same and that are different among the quadrilaterals in this group? There are many different ways we could have sorted that group of quadrilaterals. Let's take a look at one example shown here. What do you notice? What common attribute do you think I chose to focus on when sorting these quadrilaterals? I decided to sort the quadrilaterals by the number of right angles or square corners in the shape. The group on the left has four right angles. This includes rectangles and squares. The group in the middle has one or two right angles. This group includes some quadrilaterals and trapezoids. Remember, not all quadrilaterals or trapezoids may have any right angles. We can see this in the group on the right. It has zero right angles and includes shapes that we can name as parallelograms, rhombuses, trapezoids, and quadrilaterals. Show all the names that could be used to identify the rectangle. Look at these shape choices below. For a rectangle to be called one of these names, it must have all the attributes of that given shape. Let's look at quadrilaterals. We know quadrilaterals are two-dimensional closed figures with four straight sides and four angles. We know that this is also true of rectangles, so we can call rectangles quadrilaterals. Parallelograms are a special kind of quadrilateral where it has the unique attribute of having two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel and congruent in length. We know that this is also true of rectangles. So rectangles can be named parallelograms. When we look ahead at rhombuses and squares, they share a common attribute. That attribute is four sides that are congruent or equal in length. This is not true of the rectangle. So therefore, we know that rectangles cannot be named a rhombus or a square. Last, looking at the trapezoid. The trapezoid is a special kind of quadrilateral too. Its unique attribute is having at least one pair of parallel sides. This is not true of the rectangle. Therefore, we cannot name rectangles trapezoids. Bravo, third graders. Now it's your turn to try it. Complete page 197. For this practice, you will draw the stated polygons on the geoboard grids. Use a ruler or a straight edge when drawing your polygons. Next, you will multiply and find products using mental math strategies. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and stay connected.